let's just take a quick look at setting up a model with Autodesk Storm and Sanitary Analysis. I'm going to go and pull in a uh, background so we know kind of the area we're working on. And so there's a lot of sample files that ship with the program. So I'm going to go to File Import and I'm going to choose to import in through our Layer Manager an AutoCAD or image file. I'm going to open up a GeoReference TIFF image and we can see it here on our screen. Let's go in and zoom in on it a bit. So I'm going to right click and select Zoom from our context menu. Just drag a box around this area. And then I'm going to go and digitize in our subbasin for this. And let's just go ahead and digitize this. Import the boundary data from either a GIS shapefile, um, from Map3D, from Civil3 using either parcels or land XML, and that would save you the time and effort required for determining where the boundaries were for the subbasins. And so there we have it digitized. Let's go ahead and um, make sure we're running in the right analysis options. We're going to go to Import Project Options. And we have a variety of different hydrology methods available, but we're going to use SCS TR20, time of concentration method TR55, and we can even put in a minimum allowable time of concentration so it'll override whatever is computed should it be below that value. Let's select OK. And let's look at our subbasin. And we can see our area is about 21 acres. And we can see a tab here that represents our time of concentration parameters. I click on it and then we're going to specify what our sheet flow is, shallow concentrated flow and channel flow. Um, for sheet flow we're going to give it a Manning's roughness of what this surface, this terrain is or our land cover. So we're going to click on the browse button and we can scroll down into let's say natural short grass prairie type land cover between a 0.1 and 0.2 for our Manning's value. So I'll choose the middle road. I'll say 0.15 and then it wants to know our flow length. So this is for sheet flow. Although the maximum that you should put in, uh, you, you shouldn't go beyond is 300 feet. More recent literature kind of points in the direction of no more than 100 feet for sheet flow. So I'll put in 100 for that. And then we need to figure out what our slope is and I calculated that earlier it's a 0.7 percent slope. And then we need to look up our, what our two-year 24-hour rainfall is for this particular site. Now, st storm and sanitary analysis comes with a rainfall database with the entire U.S. built into it, 3,700 recording stations. And so let's just choose the state of New York. And we can choose Albany. And so it, it figures out for us that for that county, it's 2.9 inches. Now, we also have it sometimes on the local city level, depending on the project that you're working on or the site you're working on. I'll select OK, and it says for us what our uh, computed sheet flow time is for our shallow concentrated flow. Now we're going to go in and measure what that distance is. So I'm going to click on the little browse button. We're going to go and just digitize in our longest flow path. And it's about 1,200 feet. Now I'm going to subtract 100 off of that, right? So, because we put that in for our sheet flow. And our slope is 0.7. And then we can say what kind of surface it is. Now typically, you'd use paved or unpaved. We go beyond what is typical for calculating a TR55 time of concentration for shallow concentrated flow. But we'll leave it as unpaved. That's more common, what people would expect. And it gives us our computed flow time. Then if you actually have channelized flow where you have a, a ditch or a channel, stream channel or a curb and gutter, then you would put in a channel flow. We'll leave that part blank. We click on the TOC report. It calculates our uh, a time of concentration report for this basin. It will also be included in the output of the program. And we can see the total time of concentration calculated here. It's almost 30 minutes. So we'll select OK to that. Then let's define our storm that we're going to be analyzing for this. Now we could use our input menu or we can go to our data tree. I'll go in our data tree under rain gauges and I'm going to define a storm. And let's call this our 10-year 24-hour storm. 
and we're going to go in again to our rainfall designer that we talked about earlier and we see it's already remembered New York Albany we need to tell it the return period so we'll say 10 year and it knows for New York that it's most likely an SES type 2 24 hour distribution and you can see that here But we have many other distributions that are available that are built directly into the product we'll stick with this we'll select OK to that we'll select close we're good here we're going to assign that to our sub basin close that up and then we're going to go in and add a, uh, a point where it's going to spill to. We'll put a little terminus point over here. We're going to have this subbasin drain to that. So we'll right click and choose connect to. It gives us a little tool tip on what to connect it to. So I'll connect up down to this nodal point here for our spill point. Now this could connect up to another subbasin or it could connect up to a stormwater network. And then we can go ahead and route the flow through a pipe network. So we're going to go and set up our analysis parameters and so we're going to run this for a day and then we're going to select OK to that we're going to analysis perform analysis it runs our simulation I'll select OK to that and let's see what our runoff is now we can right click on this and select display time series plot and it shows us our peak runoff and we're, for whatever reason, we're working in gallons per minute. We don't really want to work in gallons per minute, so let's fix that. Go back under Input, Project Options, and we can choose cubic feet per second. You can also work in metric units, and then you're going to be working in liters per second or cubic meters um, per second or whatever units you prefer. Select OK. Let's rerun it again. Let's take a look at those results. And we'll say display time series plot, 34 cubic feet per second that is running off of this property. We can look at that storm. And there's our storm for us. And then we might want to um, put this graphic into Microsoft Word for a report we're creating. So let's take this into Word. So we'll right click and choose copy. Select OK. So let me fire up Microsoft Word. and we'll right click and choose paste and it'll put it right into our into our Word document so we can update our report well I've opened up another project just to take a quick look at it this is a three square mile watershed with many sub basins we might be interested in a particular location what is the contributing drainage area for some location in our watershed so I can right click on a node and select contributing sub basins and it'll go and highlight for me the contributing drainage area to that particular location. I might also want to see where my contributing links are. So I right click and choose contributing links. It's going to trace upstream from that point showing me what drainage links are contributing to that particular location. Well let's just run a quick analysis of this and we want to see what this storm sewer system is performing in profile view. So I'll select OK and this thing is under the 25 year storm so we're seeing quite a bit of surcharging in this pipe it's a bit undersized but anyways let's take a look and we'll zoom in on it I'll right click over here and I'll say start profile plot and we'll navigate over to here it finds the shortest path but I can walk it down whatever path I want I'll select show plot here's our profile you can see the profile plot you can see the top of the ground surface you can see the water surface elevation at this particular time step. You can see intersecting pipes where pipes are intersecting the profile. And you can see the maximum hydraulic grade line elevation. Now what we can do is we can animate this. We're going to go to output, select output animation, and we could also record this. I'll push this over here. And let's go to where it gets starts to get interesting, maybe around hour 10 and I'll hit the play button and we're going to actually see the profile within the pipe so we'll be able to actually compute within the pipe the hydraulic jump and where it passes through critical depth and you're going to see that being animated in the profile and so you can see a very accurate profile within that pipe as the storm surge passes through this, this pipe. Now these profile plots 
You can export these out into AutoCAD. And if you're using Civil 3D, it will take this into your pipe network that you have in Civil 3D. You can also, if you prefer, you can go into Profile Plot Options and you can turn on the EGL and Critical Depth. And so there are a variety of different options that you can display on these profile plots. And again, you can share this with Microsoft Word so we can right click and copy the profile plot and we can plot out the summary table or just the profile plot only. Go back into Microsoft Word and right click and choose paste and there it is in our report.